Welcome to Juniper KBTV SRX series. This video will provide a demonstration on how to configure a chassis cluster on a pair of SRX210 devices. Refer to KB15505 on kb.juniper.net for a text version of these instructions. This video will provide an overview of cluster topology, identify cluster prerequisites, show interface and cabling guidelines, provide step-by-step -step Juno's commands to configure the cluster, and use Juno's commands to verify the cluster status. For details on clustering other SRX series models, refer to KB15505 on kb.juniper.net, which has links to other platforms. Here is the topology diagram for this configuration example. It is helpful to point out the interfaces that we will be configuring. The FE007 interface is always used for the control link when clustering SRX210 devices. This is system defined. The GE001 port will be used for the fabric or data link in our example because it is a gig port. This is user defined. The GE000 interfaces will be defined in the untrust zone and form redundancy interface wreath 0.0. The FE002 interfaces will be defined in the trust zone and form redundancy interface wreath 1.0. Prerequisites. In the SRX configuration, any existing configuration associated with the interfaces that will be transformed into FXP0 for out-of-band management and FXP1 for the control link must be removed. For the SRX210, these interfaces are FE006 and FE007. The FE006 interface will be mapped to FXP0 for out-of-band management and the FE007 interface will be mapped to FXP1 for the control link. The interfaces that are mapped to FXP0 and FXP1 are device-specific. Next, confirm that the hardware on both devices is the same. Verify using command show chassis hardware on each node. Next, confirm that the software on both standalone devices is the same Junos OS version. Verify using show version command on both the nodes. And last, confirm that the license keys are the same on both devices. There is not a separate license for chassis cluster, however both firewalls must have the same identical features and license keys enabled or installed. Verify using Show System License command on both the nodes. Step 1. Connect control and fabric links between the nodes. The control and fabric links are back-to-back -back connections between the devices forming the cluster. On the SRX210 device, the control link, or FXP1, is FE007. Connect FE007 on device A to FE007 on device B. The FE007 port on device B will be referred to as FE207 when clustering is enabled. For the fabric or data link, any open port can be used, but a gig port is recommended. Therefore, for this example, GE001 has been selected for the fab link since it is a gig port. Connect GE001 on device A to GE001 on device B. 
the GE001 port on device B will be referred to as GE201 when clustering is enabled. Step 2. Enable cluster mode and reboot the devices. Set the devices into cluster mode with the following command on each device and reboot the device. The cluster ID will be the same on both devices, but the node ID should be different. The device to be made primary should be rebooted first. Step 3. Configure the host names and management IP addresses. Note, steps 3 through 7 can all be performed on the primary device and they will be automatically copied over to the secondary device when a commit is performed in step 8. Note, the Apply Groups command is required so that the individual configs for each node is set. Step 4. Configure the fab links. For this example, we will use physical ports GE001 from each node since a gig port is recommended. Fab0 is the data link interface for node 0. For our example, we're assigning GE001 to Fab0. Fab1 is the data link for node 1 and we're assigning GE201 to Fab1. Step 5. Configure redundancy groups 0 and 1. Set up the redundancy group 0 for the routing engine failover properties. Also set up redundancy group 1 to define the failover properties for the wreath interfaces. All revenue interfaces will be part of one redundancy group in this example. Step 6. Configure Interface Monitoring. Monitoring the health of the interfaces is one way to trigger redundancy group failover. Step 7. Configure Wreath Interfaces. First, make sure that you set up your max number of redundant interfaces defined. Start configuring the redundant interface Wreath 1 by assigning the physical interfaces FE002 and FE202 to Wreath 1. Next, we assign the Wreath 1 interface to Redundancy Group 1. Then we assign an IP address to the Wreath 1 interface. Now we configure the redundant interface Wreath 0 by assigning the physical interfaces GE000 and GE200 to Wreath 0. Then we assign the Wreath 0 interface to redundancy group 1. And we assign an IP address to the Wreath 0 interface. Next, add the Wreath interfaces to the security zones. Step 8. Commit and the changes will be copied over to device B. This will prepare the basic clustering setting for both the devices. Verifying chassis cluster status. Run the command show chassis cluster status to check the current status of the chassis cluster. When the chassis cluster is up, you will see a cluster ID. In this example, it is 1. 
you will see redundancy group zero with a node zero and node one listed along with their priorities. You will also see redundancy group one with a node zero and node one listed. If you do not see something like this and the cluster is not up, refer to the Chassis Cluster Resolution Guide in the next troubleshooting section. Troubleshooting For troubleshooting, refer to the Chassis Cluster Resolution Guide in KB21905 on kb.juniper.net. It contains configuration and upgrade articles, as well as resolution guides and step-by-step -step troubleshooting for chassis cluster not up, chassis cluster not failing over, and can't manage chassis cluster. Refer to KB15505 on kb.juniper.net for the text version of this video. Be sure to check out our other videos at www.juniper.net forward slash support forward slash video. If further assistance is needed, please visit our support site at www.juniper.net forward slash support. Thanks for watching.